just finished doing some yoga. I'm feeling a little bit lighter, letting go of some of the tension I was holding physically in my body. It's uh, pretty crazy during this time. Um, those are my elbows. I know I haven't been engaging in my typical self-care activities and I can really feel it uh, building up inside of my body. I'm feeling a little bit more agitated, a little bit more uh, just not quite me. I'm not relaxed. I'm not easygoing. I'm just feeling tense. So what I thought I would do is just pop on and pick a page out of my <laughs> incredibly new art journal. There's one layout that I did at uh, Off the Clock Studio with Lynette and my friend Gail. Uh, it was really, really cute. Lynette puts together fabulous art journaling classes and other projects that you can do at her little studio or take them home to do uh, on your own time. And I have a, a bad habit when I go to her place. She provides everything for you. She gives you templates and you, tracing paper, and she even lets you trace over her beautiful uh, brush stroke calligraphy handwriting. Um, and I inevitably pass on the actual templates and just try to freehand them in and then I have to go back and and try to fit <laughs> fit the phrase in and ah, make it work. It's one of those things that it's just art journaling, right? It's no big deal. But I think I would like to go back in and add some white into some of the doodling on the autumn leaves. So this will be my second spread in this beautiful art journal. I'm going to start by using some gesso. It just acts as a primer for the acrylic paint. Uh, you don't have to use it. I like to use it when I want to add a stencil and use a baby wipe just to pull things off. So these are just little uh, gift cards. I wonder if this is actually a gift card. I should check that one. <laughs> Here's. Oh, here's my old credit card that I, I use just as a spreader. Nothing fancy, but I don't love using my brushes with gesso. Um, find I find it just goes on really thick, and you don't need it to be thick. You just want to get a good base coverage. And if you have some texture scrapes in there, that's awesome too. I think I poured too much gesso. No big deal. I'll just keep doing this. This is the first video that I've made while I'm talking. Um, so you're going to hear a lot of those fillers <laughs> unless I figure out how to edit, edit it out. I don't normally talk when I art journal. It's usually quite a solitary thing for me. Very uh, a time to reflect. So this will be an interesting experiment for me personally, talking through my process instead of just talking to myself in my head. Um, yeah. So I'm just scraping some more of that gesso off. I really overdid it. So one of the things I like to joke about um, when I started art journaling in 2018, I would say that <laughs> I had barely begun my journey to become a recovering perfectionist. Uh, now that we're nearing the end of 2020, I've educated myself quite a bit about perfectionism. I'm a huge fan of Brene Brown 
and I, I read her book, uh, The Gifts of Imperfection, oh, ages ago, I think in 2009. It was shortly after she released it, after it was published. Uh, my son was barely one years old, and I was really struggling uh, as a stay-at-home mom with none of my friends um, in a similar life situation. They were all working. And I, I was pretty isolated. My husband had just started a company two years, well, a year before we were blessed with our son. And it's hard. It's hard when I, I wasn't mentally prepared for the uh, exhaustion, I'm going to say, the exhaustion. And... The crazy, the craziness that comes with being a first-time parent. <clears throat> so I was definitely searching for something I didn't know for what. Um, and what I took away from Brene Brown's book there is that in the beginning, the first time I read it, w was to notice what actually matters in the moment. And since that was back in 2009 we're in 2020 now I have a completely different perspective on how perfectionism was actually impacting me um, so we'll work through some of that stuff here and, and art journaling is about letting go of all of the perfections or the perfectionist tendencies it's no big deal if you make a mistake it's no big deal. This is my art journal. I, I think that's why when I do pages like this and it's, you know, based on somebody else's vision, I, I don't really mind if I have to kind of improvise a little bit because that's part of the fun, right? So here we are starting from a blank page. I've got some baby wipes which come in very handy uh, when you're using stencils. So I'm just going to Pull a few out so you don't have to hear the crinkling. I've selected three colors here. I have a green, a blue, and a purple. I think they're all close together on the color wheel. And I'm just going to select a pretty stencil and see what happens here. I've got some really nice ones from Tracy Scott. I just got them um, and I love them. I think this one is from yeah, uh, Dana Wakely and I just I love this flourish. So I want to incorporate that one somehow into this. And we're just going to kind of make a bit of a, a sort of messy background. I've got some squares, numbers, and big, big letters. So, first, I think I'm going to do a base. I'm just going to grab a few blocks of color, just ever so randomly onto the page here. Um, my daughter and I recorded um, some <laughs> tandem tandem art journaling the other day. We it was Remembrance Day. My kids had uh, six days off of school. So I had to keep them, them busy. <laughs> And she, she really does enjoy creating. She's very good at just kind of going with the flow, but she does have some pretty serious perfectionist tendencies. So I'm just adding a little bit of water here to help spread this paint. It's a little bit a heavy body, heavier than I was expecting. Um, but I'm not looking for perfect, right? We're just trying to spread out some color, adding a little bit of water to get variations in our tones here. You can see the 
thinner the paint goes, the, the lighter the shade ends up being. And it's not by any stretch perfect. We're just making color splotches. So I didn't even change the color on my, I didn't rinse my brush. I just went right from green to blue, grabbing a bit more water to get this guy spreading. And then once I've got all the blue done, I will wash my, well, maybe I won't wash my brush before I do the purple. We're going to see. It's, um, I, I never considered myself creative. Uh, one of those really bad self-talk things. I always thought I was bad at art. Um, and that probably stems back to elementary school, you know, when you didn't do the project exactly like your teacher <laughs> asked you to and you got a bad grade for it or you got a little talking to. And I think back to that kind of teaching style and it breaks my heart that that's what we were exposed to. And at the same time, I'm hopeful because my kids have uh, better teachers than, than I did. And I hope that they're not being told those types of things, that you're not good or you're, you're bad at this, right? And struggling through so many issues. So here I'm just kind of going in, adding the purple now, spreading it around. And it's okay to mix it on top of the blue. I think it'll give kind of a beautiful color actually. I don't know about the green. I think green's getting pretty dry. So we're not going for perfect. We're just getting a coat coat down. And I'm not being careful, right? You can see that it's looking kind of messy in places and thicker in others. I'm going to grab my number stencil, get that on there, use my baby wipe, and just start removing some of the color. And you can see that some of it is coming off easier than others. Where else should I go? I'm going to keep here. The the green is pretty dry on there, so that's okay. It's going to be a little bit darker, but I'm just kind of going for a rough look here. And you see it gives a really a beautiful, beautiful style. And I can flip it around. It doesn't have to be the right way. There aren't really any rules in art journaling kind of a just see what you what you got what do you feel like what are you in the mood for what do you need to express um, so see here like the green did lift and that's because I had the gesso down if I didn't have the gesso I don't know that the green would have lifted very well so I'm just going in and rubbing off a few more of the numbers here. Again, not perfect, and that is a-okay with me. Kind of a mishmash. Oh yeah, that's coming nice. Oh, what a beautiful color over here with the blue and the green. It's a nice, nice turquoise. I lifted some of that. So you can see here I pressed a little bit too hard on the stencil. I'm not concerned about it. It's going to be part of my texture. I'm going to ditch that baby wipe. Now before I move on to my next step here, I think I'm going to give this a quick dry and just go.
I literally have no um, overall design um, in mind with this. So <clears throat> I've got this beautiful background. <clears throat> what can I do with it? <clears throat> well, I'm picturing a couple of things right now. Um, I've, I love using hearts as a symbol of unconditional love and self-love and kindness, <clears throat> excuse me, and self-compassion. So I'm thinking about uh, blocking off some of the background with gesso and creating a few hearts that I can then go in and, and write some things in. So I'm just going to grab my little stumpy Stabilo All crayon. These are fabulous. They're water reactive. So <laughs> they, they will smudge and they will smear. And um, if you have issues with perfectionism and you want to uh, overcome those quickly, use these because they're often difficult to control. So typical for me, I'm going to just freehand some stuff and and hope hope to goodness that that it kind of works out. So oh, here we go. One heart there, maybe a smaller one right there, kind of getting some of that stuff in. And probably going to try to stick with three different sized ones, a little bit different shapes. Three's not going to do, maybe it will. So I've got my blocks here. I'm going to grab a little plastic palette that I use. I'm just going to drop some gesso in here. Not nearly as much as I had last time. Picking a new brush. <clears throat> And I'm going to pick up some of that gesso and I'm going in and covering up that beautiful background that I just created. And you can see when I go around the heart with the gesso that the Stabilo All pencil is activating and you're getting, I'm getting a nice little grungy gray mix and I'm totally okay with that. Uh, so we're just going to keep blocking it off going over with this. I don't want it to be too starkly white. I do still want to see that beautiful background behind there and just so allows you allows the background layers or whatever's underneath it to still still shine through um, obviously depending on how thick you apply it so I'm just dipping my brush in water every so often I see here I just smooched into there it's not perfect and that is a-okay it's because I just jumped right into this. I didn't take my my normal time and, and write write down some things underneath my background. That's what I normally do. Uh, it just helps me process the emotions that I'm feeling. I, I don't often talk about some of the things that are going on in my life, especially because our social circles are different with COVID around so I'm feeling that loss of connection uh, with my friends and my family and my you know my support system I miss I miss them I love these people and they've all been in my life for a reason and for a while and when you don't get to see your friends you know it's a little bit heartbreaking. Um, it doesn't really matter where you stand on the political spectrum. This is a pandemic and it's quite stressful. 
for everybody. My kids are in school, we made that hard choice to put them into in-person class. Uh, wasn't planning on it. I, I have a severely compromised immune system from medication that I take for Crohn's disease. And, and I've had several episodes throughout my life of pulmonary embolism, multiple, multiple pulmonary emboli actually, which can be incredibly fatal. I don't know why I survived the number of times that I have, but I'm still kicking. And I guess part of this pandemic has made me realize that I don't think I'm living my best life. I've been hiding a lot. Um, and, and I'm starting to make some connections about why, why, why do I do that? Why am I playing small? Our, and our journaling, our journaling helps the stuff come up. <laughs> You know, we're our own worst critics. Um, and that self-talk that, that happens, you're not always even consciously aware of it, but it's there and it's not, it's not pleasant most of the time. So you really have to catch yourself and, and just question like why why am I holding on to these thought patterns part of my path yoga has helped to learning about healing um, Reiki and energy and meditation these are all amazing tools that you can add to your toolbox and um, there we go you can see now I've made these three hearts kind of like the focal image for my for my page. I'm going to give it a quick dry. Let's make sure that gesso is good and dry before I do the next thing. purple back in and I'm just gonna use my fingertip I'm gonna grab a little bit of purple onto my finger and just go around the edges of the hearts that I drew on with the stabilo all want it to be a little bit Um, grungy, I guess is the word I was looking for. technical terms. As I was mentioning earlier, I don't consider myself <laughs> an artist. It's a hard, a hard thing for me to uh, identify as actually. And I think a lot of us struggle, like the, the people that I've met through art journaling, we have this, I don't know, this idea that what we do with art journaling is somehow less than I don't really know why. So, yeah. Not really loving that. 
think I've got it a little bit too thick there. Um, that's okay. Just grabbing in some water to spread the paint. I don't want to add too much more opacity or darkness of the purple, I think that might be what's bugging me a little bit in the first heart. There's something meditative about just playing with paint and especially getting in here and, and using your fingers. It's, it's messy and liberating. And I guess it kind of takes you back to a more innocent time. I mean, my kids finger painted. I made sure that they had that experience and some kids grow up and they don't ever want to have their fingers dirty and they're you know texturally averse to lots of things we made we made slime um, over the the fall break here and I did not like touching that there was just something about <clears throat> the texture that put me right off so that's kind of kind of funny. What shall we do? Hmm. Make these beautiful things work without causing an overload of things. So my art journal, I don't always use stencils. Um, I do like to uh, make marks in my own crazy kind of way. It's taking a little bit of time, letting that purple dry a bit. <clears throat> from Dina. It's uh, this one here. The Love Rock. Where there is love, there is no darkness. And it is love that makes the pos impossible possible. I just love these little hearts. So I'm just going to pop these off to the side. And I'm going to make a few stamps. Stamped images are super easy. Um, a really great way to add interest, more interest to your piece. Um, and again, like you can see, I'm not, I'm not super particular about this. If I get a smear or a smudge, I might restamp. Um, it's not super necessary for me especially for things that are going straight into my art journal. It's just for me, which, you know, helps, helps you, helps me let go of that uh, attachment to the outcome. I'm, I'm not looking for anyone's approval. I just want to make some, some love, I want to get back to that place.
place of self-care and self-love and compassion. So I, like I said, I feel like I've been, with the pandemic, I've been in fight, flight, or freeze, and I have been, I have been in freeze a lot of the time because of my, my health issues. Oh, see right there. <laughs> So that's an instance where I will restamp. I was trying to get too fancy in my placement. So I'm just going to go back in there. Let's see. My computer just shut off. I wanted to make sure everything was all right. So, I have my handy dandy little scissors and just do a bit of a fussy cut here. Send that aside, that aside. Bring this back. So, I also have just this really random text. Stamp. It's got script, it's got typeset, it's got some curves, it's got white space in it. It's a beautiful, subtle background uh, stamp. So I like to add these. It's not overwhelming. Um, it's not going to take anything away from your focal image. And because they're so different, you can just kind of stamp in place and you're really going to get different things every time. And you can see I'm not re-stamping, I'm getting lots of, or I'm not re-inking, sorry, and I'm still getting lots of coverage with this stamp. And you can turn it and just press different pieces in. And again, it's just contributing to that grungy, grunginess effect of the layout. You can go over top of parts you've already stamped. Um, and just kind of give it some grunginess, grungy. Some people don't like grungy, that's okay. They don't have to do that. So you can see, like it's super subtle, but it's it's there. Now, what else? I'm gonna grab my little palette again. And I'm just gonna add some green and blue. And surprise, surprise, using my fingers, I am going to mix the blue and just make some finger marks in various places on the page. These are not perfect. They are pretty random. I don't always like to actually see my fingerprint, so I kind of give them a little smudge, swirly thing. And just for, you know, the sake of art things, I, I repeat things generally three times throughout the page. I think that's just kind of a marketing or graphic design thing. I don't know if it's an art journaling thing per se, but some things that are going to bug me with this, I can see these ones are quite a bit bigger than these, so I'm just going to go back in and be mindful of my perfectionist tendencies because <laughs> I want to let those go. I'm just kind of rubbing those guys in. Cool. I'm going to grab my credit card again, <clears throat> and I'm going to take the green color and just tap. 
to get the full coverage along the short edge of the card. And I am going to go in or vertically and make some marks over top of the marks I just made. There are going to be varying heights, varying distances apart. Boy, my dog Phineas just brought me in my toque. You will have to excuse me while I wrestle that from him. Ah, ah, ah. Nice try. My beautiful toque successfully retrieved from the doodle. There we go. <laughs> nice warm CC toque that he brought me from the mudroom. Thank you, Phineas. He's like, Mom, you're doing art and I want you to pay attention to me. So with this one here on the side, I'm gonna go horizontal. And again, I'm not being super careful just trying to make some interesting shapes out and around the blue fingerprints that I did. And the same thing here, I'll go back to the uh, vertical lines. Um, just to see what, what I like. <clears throat> and just kind of carry them out a bit kind of peeking up there with the, with the blue dots. Not just again, it's just help giving a little bit of, of grungy, right? It's not anything and if you know kind of go with it here I'm gonna just smear some of this off and see if I can rub that in and I'll probably do something similar around the edges here just rubbing in some more color adding some back in with the blues and the greens giving some definition the edge of my book, finding a little bit of water so I can thin this out. Where's my mister? Little mister, super handy. You just want to lighten things up. A bit more of a blendy, blendy feel here into the middle of the page. Working kind of low. And if you feel like right here, I feel like I've got maybe a little bit too much color here along the bottom. I'm just going to spread it with my baby wipe and see if I can make it a little bit more uh, organic and not quite so. Mm, I don't know. It just wasn't, I wasn't feeling it right. Okay, <clears throat> and I'm just gonna keep going with adding a little bit more water here, spreading some of this out, creating the corners. A new a relatively new desk setup for me so I don't really know <laughs> where to put all my stuff when I'm finished using it I'm just gonna kind of shine this in rub it in really gently 
don't want to wreck what I've done already, but I do want a bit of an organic feel. A little bit of that. off because they're a little dirty <laughs> and that's okay so with these beauties I'm going to do a fussy cut around them so it's not a super tight cut it's okay for them to not be perfect um, and you know just kind of getting her done without being too too sloppy I think that's gonna bug me so you guys this is part of my self-talk that I don't even notice that I say cutting things off because they're going to bug me. Oh my goodness. All right. Wondering if the camera and the uh, microphone is picking up all the nail clicking happening in the background here. He keeps walking in and out, looking out the window. He's probably going back to the mudroom to see what else he can bring me. Mm, yeah, is that right, Vinny? He may bark. He might even sing. And what a glorious sound it is to hear a doodle sing. It's like with kids and puppies. <laughs> Our neighbors just got a cute little Wheaton Terrier. And she hasn't really barked yet. She's not been very vocal, at least not out in the yard when we see her. And they're like, oh, when's she going to find her voice? And I'm like, don't, don't, don't wish that. <laughs> That's, uh, let it be. <laughs> Once they find their voice, you wish, you wish they had an off button, just like with your kids. I was worried, is my daughter going to start talking soon? Of course she did, and I love her to pieces, but sometimes I just want the quiet. So I'm going to cut this one up a little bit more, a little bit later, so you can just sit, sit up there right, right now. So now I've got these hearts, I don't even know if I'm going to use them, or if maybe I'm just going to stack them all together. I don't know. Maybe I'm not going to use them. And this is, for me, one of the best things about art journaling is everything is completely flexible. So I've got this super cute little stencil. Uh, this one is from Sarah Trump with two Ps, no relation to the outgoing president of the United States. in this fluorescent pink literally fluorescent fluorescent pink it's very bright it's a beautiful color and see what happens when I mix a little bit of gesso a little bit of blue getting 
a different shade of purple here. And I'm just going to take this stencil and kind of play off the marks that I made with my fingers on the credit card and just dab in here. Now this is not going to be super dark. It's not very opaque. You'll be able to see the layers below it. Which is what I would like. And you can see here, we can just keep going, adding in parts over top of other things. To, to be fair, usually I have a bit more of a plan when I'm uh, art journaling. It's, this is just totally um, intuitive. I have no, no, no preconceived idea about what this is going to turn out to be like. Um, and very often when I'm starting out a journal spread, I've, I've sat with myself and my emotions for a little while and kind of, you know, had a bit of an epiphany of sorts that I want to work out or I just want to add to my journal. Um, and today I, I don't, I didn't do that. I don't have anything pressing except for that return to self care. And man, I'm feeling it. And the easiest way for me to represent that is through hearts. It might seem juvenile, but it's fabulous. It's one of those things that girls write hearts. We draw hearts from a very young age. At least I did. <laughs> My daughter did. I don't know if that's... Uh, standard across cultures. <laughs> I don't know, but we have, we have a good old time drawing hearts and rainbows and all sorts of things. Hmm. I think I need a bit more of these here. This little corner feels a bit empty. See, this color is pretty subtle. It's not um, super vibrant anymore, which is fabulous. And there's variations to it depending on whether I added the blue or not. And I'm just dabbing this paint through the stencil. few more right here. Cute. Okay. Just rinsing off my brush here. normally wipe my stencils, but why not? Now I'm noticing that I've really brought back quite a bit of color into the background that I wasn't initially anticipating. <clears throat> so now I'm going to try to bring back some of that glow around the hearts with my gesso. Probably very watered down gesso. don't want it to be thick at all. And this is when it's really easy to let the perfection come in. 
and take over. And there's a difference between not being able to let things go and nitpicking. I don't normally allow myself to nitpick overly in my art journals. They're just quiet, therapeutic play for me. Um, but there is a, you know, a style element coming into this that I, I, I would like, so you just have to be gentle with yourself. And now, I would like that edge to be even softer than it is. So I'm just coming back in with more water. purple and that's okay it's just kind of a little a little messy coming back with my little white I'm just gonna smear that a bit more it's lifting some of the color or some of the white, and that's okay. Oh, that's, that's not okay. It's really hard there. Too much. Phineas, you're really antsy today, buddy. He pulled a scone off the stove. I left them there to cool after I made the kids lunch. I wasn't very happy with him. I kicked him outside. It's about minus, I don't know, minus eight here um, Celsius. Lots of snow on the ground. Okay, so this is, you know, okay let's see I think next thing is going to be just to give a nice subtle stabilo all outline on the inside of the heart it should create some some depth in here Activating with water. This is the one that really will get you out of your perfectionist tendency because if you have too much water, it just goes where it wants. And you just kind of have to be okay with it. Or be very particular with your movements, which I find. You know, when I'm working with big shapes like this, I'm not super particular. Is that bringing in some definition? Yeah. And you can see what you like. You don't have to do um, anything that I'm doing. Uh, it's just a an invitation to play. And I feel like I haven't been playing with my paints. Not very often at all. Not just for a sit down impromptu what's going to come out onto the paper. I 
And you miss that quite a bit. There we go. So I think that's all right. It's giving me some stuff to think about. And I don't know yet. I, I really love these hearts and I would really like to use them. I'm just not sure they're fitting. super perfect although I do have a little guillotine like press I don't know what they're called paper trimmer I guess that would help with that so I do like I don't know if I like those words even we'll see so I'm going to give this a shot of heat and then I think I'm just going to do some details um, with Posca pens or Uniball Signos. Um, but before I pull those out, this has to be really quite dry. And that, that's just bugging me. <laughs> See, I think, I think I'm a recovering perfectionist and then, and then stuff like that bugs me, right? And I'm like, oh dear. Oh dear. Try my best. That's all I can do, right? Just try my best. Stabilo All as one of my last layers here. I'm going to add a shot of workable fixative um, so that it won't smear or smudge as I'm drying over them. So I'm just going to take this outside real quick. Okay, so I sprayed the workable fixative onto my layout and I am going to use my little Uniball Signo white pen and just do some scribble writing. What I think I'm going to do is around the outside of the hearts. And this is just kind of like um, free, free thought writing, right? Um, I'm sure somebody out there will know <laughs> the proper terminology. I'm just gonna make sure my pen's working. Here we go. So it's just kind of a little, a little note to myself about what I'm feeling today. And it's a little bit messy, a little bit loopy, and that is okay.
Um, so the hardest part for me um, is not putting my arm down on the writing. Um, and smudging it. These uh, Uniball Signos will dry permanent, but they are, it, it takes them a little bit of time to dry. So if you touch them, they will smear. Um, so I guess I'm just writing myself some little, three little unconditional love messages. Um, help help remind me um, I listen to Sarah Blondin on Insight Timer quite a bit and she has a book out now called Heart Minded and one of the things that she says in there it just really hit me it says she says I give myself total permission to become my heart and I guess what she's what she's saying is so often we're living in this space separate from our true, our heart's true desires. Uh, we're, we're living in this place of expectation um, and, and it's so unhealthy and we need to allow ourselves to come back to self and live from a place of our hearts. So I think I'm going to write that maybe on this middle one. Um, I'll see how many times I can get, get that around. around twice perfectly. Um, what else what else do I want to write in here? Um, maybe maybe Okay, so I've got my messages down. I'm just going to keep with my uh, white uniball signal and just outline some of these cute little heart stencils that we popped in. I'm not sure. I might just do every heart. It kind of helps them stand out because the paint was so translucent. And you can see again that it's not not perfect it's pretty rough but they're hearts we know how to draw hearts am i right and even a little paint splotch that may or may not have been a heart can become one in art journaling So this, this was a bit of a departure for me not having written underneath my background. Um, I almost always do that and I don't know why today I just didn't take that time to center myself. I was a bit excited to start the video. Um, 
but personally I find it really powerful to write out everything that's going on inside of me, my mind, um, and then cover it up with paint. I feel very safe when I do that, you know, no one is ever going to be able to peel back the layers of the paint. So no one is ever going to read what I've written. And, and I tend to write very, very messy in my background layer, like as messy as I possibly can. <laughs> and, and just that in and of itself helps free you from perfectionist tendencies, right? When you're, how often do we deliberately do something messy? It's a challenge. Some of us won't ever be able to do it. I feel like we've just been conditioned, especially as little girls, to be, to have pretty handwriting. And I, I always practiced. I practiced and practiced because I wanted to have pretty handwriting for no good reason. It was a societal expectation that I put onto myself. I don't think anybody ever told me that, oh, girls have to have nice printing or writing. It's just one of those silent cues you pick up as a kid. And try to foster in my daughter that yes, we can have nice handwriting, but no, we don't have to crumple up a piece of paper when we make a mistake. Um, so I feel like so often that's her first instinct anyways, is to just crumple, get rid of it all. So that looks all right. I don't even know if I need to put something else on the inside of these hearts. Hmm, what do we think? I'm going to just uh, edge the, the pages here, just taking my ink pad and just lightly brushing messily around the edges, creating a bit of a grungy texture here. Not perfect letting it come up a bit into the page, covering up some more stuff. I feel like this just really helps frame, frame an art journal layout. I mean, it's basically what a mat would do in a picture frame. It's just helping create a little bit more interest in spots. Okay, that's pretty cool. Kind of want some there. And it doesn't well, have to be perfect. Cool. Now what do I do? I printed, I, I have these stamped words from the Dina Wakely stamp set where there is love there is no darkness I don't know if I entirely agree with that because we all have a shadow self and we all have darkness within us so I don't know if that really resonates with me I've got these super cute little be the change cards here for kids and for adults and sometimes not sometimes, always, they have these fabulous little phrases on them. This one is determination. As a master, I gather together my powers and capabilities. 
I consolidate my forces and focus my will. Automatically, my goal is achieved. Like, how cool are these? These are lovely. Oh, here's compassion. Maybe, maybe that would be a good fit. And you can see that they are the Be the Change cards. By understand, understanding the suffering of another, we can both grow through heartfelt experience. I feel like that actually might work. Where though? Right here? Up here? grab the little paper cutter guillotine thingy. Cut this up nice and straight. I hope. Now, one of the things I love about art journaling specifically is that it truly is mixed media. You can use any found object, um, fabric, material, uh, string, <laughs> literally anything. And, and so often in my art journaling, I find I, I use that often. This one again, I didn't have a plan. I just kind of jumped right in with the recording. So to glue these, this phrase on, I'm going to use a little bit of matte medium. And this is a really important reason why I sealed the Stabilo All with um, workable fixative, because if I were to do this with my matte medium and I hadn't sealed it, all of that black would be smearing everywhere which we don't want. So I'm just going to go over that a few times here and get this quote down. I, I like adding quotes to my layouts. Some people don't, and that's okay. I find the quotes... Uh oh I just got ink on the quote. <laughs> See, no mistakes, no big deal. Kind of a big deal, but I'm just going to let that sit there for a bit. Get it a bit dry. And when you're using the matte medium, you can use matte gel. Um, no Mod Podge, that stuff gets sticky and it will make your book stick together or your sheet, paper, whatever it is that you're journaling on. So let's put this back. Give this a quick shot.
it's not completely dry, but when it is, I will go around it, just around each rectangle with a thin black pen. And I think that's, that's my layout for today. So I can show you that we had started out with blues, purples, and greens. Um, stenciled that, lifted the color off. Um, applied a thin layer of gesso uh, after making our focal points or shapes. Made a few marks, added a couple of little fun hearts around with a stencil and wrote some stuff and I don't know, did a border and put on a quote. And this is, will be my reminder that, yeah, I need to focus on, on self-compassion, self-care, and understand that right now with the pandemic, it's hard for everybody. And that's, that's the scale. It's not as hard for everybody as it is for others, right? Some people are, are living through a much more difficult time right now. So please, wherever you are watching this, maybe say a little heartfelt note or heartfelt saying to yourself, um, you know, offering compassion to everyone who is suffering. And it is humanity to suffer. So know that we're all suffering in different ways. And we all deserve kindness and compassion and love. Thank you for joining me today. And show me, show me what your art journals look like. I can't wait to see. I'll have to break out my old journals and do some flip throughs for you. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.